So unless you've done hours of research, trying to find a new TV is way more daunting now than it's ever been in the past. The brands are making the technology names confusing, there's different technologies, there's different sets that are right for different things, and trying to find the right technology for your use case can be difficult. So the past few years, I have made a yearly buyer's guide where I run through all the different tech, give you some TV options, tell you which set is best for right environment, and hopefully help you guys decide which TV is going to be right for you. And also, as I go through this down below, there'll be TV recommendations for each bit of technology that I talk about, if one sort of sends to jump out at you. So now that we're in 2024, we can look at all the TVs that have come out, technologies that have changed, and hopefully help you guys find the right TV set for you. So before I get into technology, some general buying tips. The first thing is a misconception that higher price is going to be a better TV. That used to be the case a few years ago. It is definitely not anymore. While price can reflect a newer or specific TV technology, you can do a lot with less expensive TVs. And while tons of sites online sort of take you through color calibration, the deep trenches of setting up those step-by-step, -step, you can make less expensive TVs look as good as a much more expensive set if we're willing to put in the time. The next point is the time that you buy. TV prices tend to fluctuate almost daily, so look for sales around holiday times and chances are you will find the set that you want at a discount. So another thing to consider is what you're going to be using the TV for. If you're using it largely for gaming, this is a big one, make sure whatever TV you're looking at has at least one 4K HDMI 2.1 port with a refresh rate of 120 hertz or higher if you're using a next-gen console like a PS5, for example. But probably the biggest thing to consider is where your TV is going to be placed. Is it going to be in a darker room, a room with a ton of windows? Are you gonna mount it or put the TV on a stand lower to the floor? All these things can dramatically influence which TV tech is right for you. So with all that being said, let's get started. All right, so let's start with OLED, O-L-E-D. Uh, it is a trusted technology it has been around for a while. And it's known for a few things, but the biggest one is true black levels because those organic light emitting diodes are actually turned off. So when they're off, they're just black. Uh, you're also gonna get near unlimited viewing angles. You usually have a much thinner profile, so great for wall mounting. You're getting high contrast ratio, great color reproduction, really good for the avid sort of cinema fans. There are sort of subcategories of OLED too, QD OLED and W OLED. But for pretty much every new OLED TV, I'm talking about W uh, OLED. So just sort of bear that in mind. While OLED TVs look incredible, uh, there are some disadvantages. There used to be a narrative on OLED TVs a few years ago that still kind of plagued them today. First, that they would have burn-in and they didn't get nearly as bright. The burn-in issue has been almost completely solved. Unless you're buying an OLED TV that's maybe four years old, you will not have to worry about burn-in at all. The brightness in older OLEDs was definitely an issue, but the newest technology of OLED, especially WOLED, and I'll talk more about QD OLED, has fixed most of those brightness issues as well. So if you're buying any new OLED TV, you don't have to worry about those things. Something you do have to worry about are things like high gloss. These screens tend to be very reflective, so you'll see a lot of reflection. And also the biggest knock on OLED TVs and any of their OLED technology, are typically priced a lot higher. So here's who I think an OLED TV is perfect for. If you've got a darker room, don't have a lot of direct sunlight that can cause reflections, if you want incredible color reproduction, you're looking for those perfect black levels, OLED is going to be a great choice for you. If you're using it for gaming or watch mostly news channels or sports, OLED is great for that as well. Make sure it's again a newer model, so you don't have to worry about burn-ins, so it's got the refresh that's going to happen. Uh, newer models also tend to be brighter, so you have a room where you can't control the lighting, perhaps W OLED is a better way to go. In fact, for my own personal TV set at home, I opted to go for a W OLED set. I have a few years old now LG G2 in my living room, but like anybody who follows this technology, uh, it's changing very quickly. I've got my eye on LG's new M series. LG's got the G4 out. This technology is getting better and better every year. So the next technology you're gonna see everywhere. Uh, it's QLED or QLED. So when it first came out, it was really just a traditional LED TV with a layer of quantum dots or nanocell tech over it. 
and those additional layers created a more vibrant and colorful image, as well as a brighter one. But now, QLED is spread across pretty much every TV technology as a way to enhance the color and brightness of these sets. But this section's gonna be going over traditional QLED TVs that still use LED technology, because they're still evolving. You can get them at absolutely incredible prices. QLED TV tech, in general, are not going to be as thin as OLEDs, but they are typically no thicker than like a picture frame or thinner than a canvas print. These sets are also known for their incredible brightness levels. So your TV is going in a really, really bright room. These are better suited for that. On the scale of brightness, these fall around the middle of the pack, which is saying something for the brightest TVs on this list because they are still incredibly bright. A lot of advantages of QLED. You're gonna have a ton of affordable options here. Uh, Amazon TVs, Google TVs, Roku TVs built in as your main UI. You have options to get much larger sizes for the same price as a smaller OLED set. And if you spend the time dialing in picture settings, that can go a long way with these sets. I think you'd be really surprised at how good a picture you can get out of these sets if you're willing to spend a little bit of time to dial them in. If you're the kind of person who doesn't want to do a ton of research, you just want a good TV, it's going to go on your wall or go on a stand, uh, it's going to look good, uh, QLED is a great way to go. But they're not perfect. Black levels are nowhere near OLED. The black color, if you look closely, you can tell is sort of a darker version of gray. Also, blooming tends to be more noticeable on these sets. You might sort of see a glow uh, around really bright objects. All the more expensive QLEDs have various sort of technology in there to mitigate that. Also, not ideal for view angles as well. They can kind of get washed out as you go to the side. Uh, it's also really important to check uh, what I.O. ports and refresh rates are on these sets because a cheaper price point often comes at a sacrifice for those premium features. So QLED is a great option if you're more of a casual TV fan and you've got a lot of light in your room. No risk at all for burn-in. You usually find some at incredible price points. Brands like TCL come to mind. They've got a huge array of TVs in this category at a wide range of prices. Uh, newer QLEDs do come at higher prices, and those will have more local dimming zones to produce better contrast and also have less blooming to the image. QLEDs also don't always have the gaming features you might find on OLED TVs. So things like 4K and 20 Hertz, some do, but not all. So if you're using a next-gen gaming console, so they check on those extra features uh, before you buy a set. But if you're just like streaming using Apple TV or something like that, especially if you're using the Dolby settings, you'll be absolutely fine. So there's obviously a ton of technology in TVs and it moves really fast, but there's a lot of technology and things that like you wouldn't expect in your house. For example, like your toothbrush. If you wanted an expensive powered toothbrush, those things used to cost $200, $300, but all of that awesome technology has come down to the pinnacle of toothbrush tech. So meet this video's sponsor, the Lifen Tech Wave. It looks like this thing was designed in Cupertino, but it does all the toothbrush stuff you would expect and the stuff you didn't even know you wanted. I'm talking things like 60 degree oscillation and vibration combined. It's gonna produce three times higher cleaning efficiency, which means your teeth will look pearly white. And it's also due to Lifen's proprietary servo system. That's gonna sort of adapt as you go. It's technology that was previously utilized in robotic arms. That's gonna use PID algorithms and hall sensors to generate consistent brushing power, even when it counters resistance. So if you brush like super hard, the toothbrush won't slow down, which other brands really struggle with. You've got a seamless design. There's no gaps or place for dirt or debris to accumulate. Pressure sensitive buttons built in, two and a half hour magnetic fast charging. It's got an app too if you wanna to fine tune things. The best part, the toothbrushes start at $69.99. Brush heads are three pack for $9.99 and a six pack for $16.99. You can choose the type of brush head you want. Gum care, super clean, ultra whiting, whatever you want, Lifen's got you covered. It is quick, it's easy, it'll do the work for you so you don't have to think about it. And when you're done, your teeth will be shiny, they will be clean, and you're just gonna get a really clean look and feel inside of your mouth. If you're looking at your teeth and looking a little bit yellow, you wanna get a new toothbrush or just not brush manually, uh, the Life and Wave is absolutely the way to go. And if you wanna learn more, we got a link to it down below. There's more technologies, and one of the ones becoming much more popular in 2024 is mini LED. And this is kind of like the sweet spot of almost a combination between what you get with QLED and OLED. Mini LED is probably the perfect option for gaming. And think of it as like the evolution uh, of QLED tech. And it seems like brands have gone out of their way to make this tech in particular as confusing as possible. 
Sometimes you'll see brands like TCL, thank goodness, call it what it is, mini LED. But then you see brands like Samsung call their mini LED Neo QLED, and LG calls theirs QNED. But they are all mini LED technology. Just know that all these acronyms are the same technology, just have sort of different types of quantum dot layers over the mini LED panels. And ultimately, they're still backlit panels like QLED sets, but the LEDs are shrunk way down. That's where the mini LED name comes from. Uh, that way you'll have more local dimming zones to help you create a sharper contrast and the illusion of deeper blacks. Essentially it's LED technology doing its best OLED impression and trying to do that typically at a really good price point. These sets are insanely bright. Typically they are the brightest on the market as of right now. Like I mentioned, more local dimming zones for traditional QLED, so you're getting less blooming on bright objects around a dark background. They tend to come in at larger sizes too, at more affordable prices than OLEDs. They tend to be decently thin, but not like razor thin, but no risk for burning. Some of these sets you'll see also come in 8K. Obviously there's not a lot of 8K content out there, but if you wanna future-proof yourself, you've got the option with this. And a lot of these sets will upscale 4K content to 8K for you. And these sets have great color reproduction uh, up to peak brightness. And they also greatly benefit from color calibration, as you can make these sets look like near OLED on the colors. These typically are great for nearly any situation. Sports, casual TV watching, movies. Uh, personally, I prefer mini LED for gaming. And more often than not, these come with premium IO ports for gaming, so you're getting your high refresh rates and a ton of gaming specific features designed to bring out the full experience of a game. And gaming in HDR on mini LED tech is absolutely incredible, but not perfect. Uh, viewing angles tend to not be as great as OLED, but certainly leagues ahead of traditional QLED TVs. And out of the box, these sets are not always the best. If you don't go in and do color calibration, you might not be as impressed with the black levels on these sets. And some brands might have more reflective screens than others, but it's worth sort of going to a Best Buy or a big box store and take a look for yourself in case you have a lot of practical light at wherever you're gonna put your TV. It's also significantly heavier than typical OLED or QLED sets. You plan on wall mounting or moving them around. You might need either help or an expert to install these to make sure it's safely secured on the wall. So essentially for mini LED, it's a newer version of QLED, like I said. Price varies crazy depending on the brand. And despite the different names, the tech is essentially the same. Pretty much everyone's making some version of a mini LED TV. So if you are keen on a particular brand, odds are they've got a great mini LED TV for you. They're extremely bright sets that come in at some great prices. And with those great prices, you're getting some of the best and most advanced TV tech features that go a long way for things like gaming. If you don't mind taking the time to sort of look up picture calibrations, which sounds daunting, it's not really that bad, I promise. Then these sets are an easy recommend to almost anyone. All right, so last but definitely not least, the, the current king of TV technology, the latest iteration of OLED, I kind of talked about it quickly in that section, Meet QD OLED, which is probably the best way to watch sports. So the QD, QD OLED stands for Quantum Dot OLED. It's the newest and much brighter version of OLED. Only a few brands offer this tech right now. Sony and Samsung are sort of two as of this filming. So the one I've got here is a Sony A95K and 65 inches, and these take everything that's amazing about OLED and enhances it, sadly, including the price. So a lot of advantages here. Brighter than traditional OLED. If you didn't have a mini LED TV sitting right beside it, you'd assume that these were the brightest TVs on the market. Colors are crazy rich and vibrant thanks to that quantum dot layer over the OLED. With the help of that quantum dot layer, you're getting really high color accuracy out of these sets. And in Sony's case, it's one of the most color accurate TVs on the market. But the real flex isn't how poppy and vibrant these colors are at peak brightness, it's how accurate those colors are in low light scenes. You are seeing a scene exactly how it was supposed to look. And because this is a premium OLED technology, you're getting the most advanced processors and TV features on the market. And all these features are designed to tune your viewing experience to be the best version possible. Again, that's why I love QD OLED for watching sports. Perfect black levels, infinite contrast, near unlimited viewing angles, generally striking really thin design options, the absolute lowest need for calibration. You really don't have to touch these sets too much. It's kind of a set it and forget it 
kind of TV. But this advantage is here, and the big one is in your wallet. So QD OLED panels are coming up in size bigger than 65 inches now, which is good. The prices on those sizes are not for the faint of heart. Not quite as bright as mini LED, but really close. This is about as close to a perfect TV as you can sort of reasonably get right now. I'm not gonna bring in things like micro LED or any of that, but in sort of the wide swath of TV technology, QD OLED is the king. And if price is no object, and you want one of the best future-proof options for TV technology out there, QD OLED makes a ton of sense. It is the best for a reason. The tech improves upon existing technology. It's extremely low maintenance, looks incredible out of the box. And no matter what you decide to watch on these sets, it's going to look absolutely incredible. In between all these technologies, there's some subcategories of sets, but generally these are the biggest technologies you're going to find. As you go to Amazon, you go to Best Buy, you go to your, you know, whatever website you're looking at for TVs, this technology you are going to find. And the more I'll take away from this is almost any TV technology is good now. There's almost not a bad TV set that exists. Some are better in different categories than others. Some are better for different situations than others. But no matter what TV you get, hopefully now you understand the technology to go behind it, you can make the best TV buying decision for you.